Hello everyone, and welcome to our tour through the coming enhancements to your Design Manager Pro Cloud software. My name is Brad, and I'll be hosting the demonstration today. If you have questions during the webinar, feel free to enter them into the questions pane on your GoToWebinar panel. If the question is outside of the scope of today's discussion, please email them to support at designmanager.com. Lastly, if you miss a portion of the webinar or want to review any of our past discussions, go to our YouTube channel at Design Manager Inc., Design Manager INC. And here you can see all sorts of topics, including quick start videos, short helpful tutorials, and more comprehensive webinars that we categorize into our project management and accounting courses, along with all of our weekly webinars as well. As you know, today we're gonna to be discussing uh, the major features soon to be available for your Design Manager Pro Cloud software, and they span the spectrum from the pleasingly pragmatic to the thoroughly dramatic. So let's get started. First, we're gonna go over a few features in the software itself, beginning with the unit of measure list. Now, responding to the desire of many of our clients, we've now made the unit of measure list accessible on your item and component window and throughout the software really into a list that you can control and here's how you do so go to file and company information on your company information window click the advanced button go to the general tab and you can see a button for your unit of measure list and here is an example of a standard unit of measure list. If I wanted to create a new one very easily, I could just click add, let's type in units as an example, and there we go, and Design Manager will alphabetize it for us. <clears throat> so you can add, edit, delete, uh, and configure the list to your liking. And now if we go over to one of our items as an example, we'll be focusing on our Lakewood home a lot today, so let's use that, we'll edit our first item for the bed. <clears throat> Looking at our unit of measure, now we can see units as one of our options. So you have full control over your unit of measure list now. And this brings us nicely to a feature that's been requested with greater and greater frequency, the item name field. Let's go back into our bed as an example. And you can see a new field titled name and description. <clears throat> The item name allows you to record the primary, let's call it title or name of the item. And it's used in conjunction with the traditional description, which can be used to provide much more detail on the overall uh, information of the item. <clears throat> if, however, the item is uh, very identifiable or self-explanatory, or you simply prefer to have nice concise items on your documents to the client, you could solely use the item name and don't need to use the description at all. For example, let's take a look at another one of our items, our coffee table. And in this case, I have nothing recorded in the description field and only I'm using the new item name field. And yet on our specifications window, we can see that as part of the description as well. And it will be identified as that throughout the entire software. And finally, as with most features in Design Manager, if you don't feel you have a use for the item name or you don't need to input anything there and you can enter your items exactly as you have done in the past. If we look at our cabinet, here's an example where I'm not using the item name at all and I'm simply using my description as I have done for years. So how does the item name appear on your documents such as your proposal to your client? Well, let's take a look. Let's jump over to our proposals for our Lakewood home. We'll add a new one. And let's select the three items that we were just reviewing. We have our bed, we have our cabinet, and our coffee table. Let's make our proposal a bit larger and we can see, here's our cabinet where we're not using the item name at all. Then we have our Paris coffee table, which is only an item name and no description. And finally, our bed has a combination of both. As you can see, what I'm trying to point out here is it looks the exact same on your proposal to your client. So you have this additional uh, item name that can be used solely 
as the description of the item in conjunction with the description, or it can be completely uh, left alone if so desired. So that is our item name field. Well, we'd certainly be remiss if we didn't have a complementary feature on the component side of the specification. So we've also added a component or purchase order name field and description. Let's take a look about our mosaic tile here. Let's go down to our first component. And here, just above the description, very similar to our item name, is our purchase order name and description. And again, I'm using a nice uh, summated information about the component itself with more information in the description. And it works, you know, analogously to the item name. It's going to appear as part of the description throughout the software and on all of your documents to the vendor, including your purchase and work orders. So if we take a look at a purchase order for our mosaic tile, let's go to our POs for our Lakewood project. Add a new one. Sort that by vendor. Jump down to our waterworks. There's our tile. And as you can see, just like the item name, the component name is just blended right in with the description for you. <clears throat> so it looks just like you're using the description itself. Perfect. Okay, so we have our new unit of measure list that gives you full control over what uh, units you want to see and all of your unit of measure drop down list throughout the software. We have our brand new item name and our brand new purchase order or component name as well. <clears throat> now, let's move on to our truly ambitious new features. And let me start by introducing the product clipper. Now, this is a Chrome plugin that works seamlessly with your Design Manager Pro Cloud software, allowing you to source product as fast as possible. Let's see how this works. Now, after installing the product clipper in your Chrome browser, you're gonna see the Design Manager icon in the toolbar. And if you click the icon, you're going to have a window where you're going to enter in your login information. Now you will need to know both your ProCloud username and your password to allow you to authenticate to your account. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And here we go. And now we can see our product clipper. Now, upon logging in, you can see there's already many fields common to your item window, such as our item name that we just described, our item description, uh, cost and pricing information, all of uh, part of cost information, product location, sales category, et cetera. Now, I could certainly just enter in this information from what's on the website that I'm looking at, our example here of uh, the Oak Desk from First Dibs. But what's the real point of the clipper then? All we have to do is use the clipper to click what information we want to input and then select the corresponding information on the web page. Let's, let's see how that works. We'll begin with the picture itself. Now, if you just hover your mouse over any image on the web page, you're gonna see the design manager icon appear. If I wanna import or bring that picture into the clipper, just click the icon and it appears right in our product clipper. If I don't like that image or want to use a different one, I can just use the trash can to remove it and add another one. The item name field. And notice when I click in there, it becomes highlighted in color. So now what information I select on the web page will come into my item name. So I'll go ahead and use the French Art Deco desk information. The item description, again, appears in color, letting me know that I can input information here. I can leave it blank as well, though. In this case, maybe we will. The vendor. Our product clipper, as I said, is tied, is linking directly with our Design Manager Pro Cloud software. So if I have a vendor already in Design Manager, I can simply search for it and, in, and import it. So if I start searching for first dibs, I have it right there. 
manufacturer's catalog number I could input. Let's put a quantity in. The unit of measure also tied to our brand new unit of measure list. Start typing each and I can select that. The cost. Well, in this case, I'll use the price as the cost and I could also input that as well. I could put some shipping information for cost in there as well. And beneath that, I have additional information and I could input as little or as much detail about the project, location, sales category, and component description as desired. We can always import, input this, late, this information later, as we're going to see shortly. Let's go ahead and use our Lakewood project. There we go. I could skip the location for now, sales category. Again, tied right to my design manager. So if I start typing my furniture sales category, I have it right there. Component description, I could put that in, but let's leave that blank. We'll see why in a little bit. Then my options along the bottom. Save is going to commit the information to our uh, a new area in design manager that we'll see momentarily. Clear would obviously get rid of all the uh, information and the picture itself, and I can log out. Well, if we go ahead and click save, I've now successfully saved our desk item. Let's do another one real quick. We'll hop over to another website. And here we go. So we can go ahead and get our picture of the Abbott bar. Oops. Comes right in. The item name, I'll use that for Abbott bar. Item description, well, let's see. Ah, I can use that description works perfectly. Vendors, this is Hickory Chair. Let's see if I have that loaded. I sure do can select manufacturer's catalog number. I have that quantity one each for my unit of measure. And I see that I don't have any cost information, so I can leave that blank along with my shipping cost. And the rest of my additional information, again, I can leave blank as well. Go ahead and click save. And that captured our Abbott bar item now as well. So let's go ahead and close our Chrome. And now back in our design manager, well, where did our clip products go? Uh, this is the perfect transition to our next topic, the Pro Cloud whiteboard. The whiteboard is your personal staging area for products, tasks, contacts, and more, where they can all be reviewed, vetted, transferred, and a bunch of other tasks as well. Let's take a look. Close out of some of our windows here. The whiteboard is easily access accessed from your project tab, and you can see a new whiteboard button. If I click, our whiteboard comes up, and lo and behold, there are our two new captured items. We can go ahead and review the information that we just captured quite easily by using the edit button. Let's go ahead and review our desk first. Again, click the edit button as indicated by the pencil icon and that brings up our whiteboard item and right here we can see so much of the information that we've already entered from our product clipper <clears throat> so I had the project set to our Lakewood home location I could add one now if I desire let's go ahead and put that into the office group my sales category is coming over for me Client description, I can leave blank for now if desired, and you'll see why in a moment, um, along with the purchase order description. That's going to be used again in conjunction with our item name in both the client and purchase order description, so I can optionally leave those blank if desired. Then, along the bottom, we had our cost that we brought over from the website. And any information that I want to change here, I can do so as well. So right now my whiteboard item is allowing me to review the information, change the information, all while keeping it in our whiteboard staging area. And by clicking OK, I'm saving my changes to it. Now, from here, I can click the Update or Create button. And when I do so, I have all of my share and create options, and you can see there's quite a few here. Create item, create inventory item, duplicate, etc. 
if I want to go ahead and commit or move my item from the whiteboard to an actual to the actual project, I can go ahead and hit the create item selection. Design Manager says the new item will be created in the project. I click OK to confirm. And Design Manager now alerts me that the new item in our TES01 project has been created successfully. Do you wish to open it now? Sure. Let's go ahead and review. And here is our item now in our Lakewood home. Our item name came over as we would imagine, the location, of course. Our, all of our sales category and other information we entered on the whiteboard came with it. Our client deposit and pricing information all came from the project. So my project is configured for 50% deposit. Design Manager calculates that for me. It also calculates the pricing for us based on my 30% markup for this particular project and my purchase order name and description is also being set to the Oak Desk as well. If we go ahead and close our item, let's take a look just to verify in our project specifications for our Lakewood project. Let's sort this back. There is our French Art Deco desk. So we've used our product clipper to quickly source our information from our desired website. That imports it into our whiteboard where we can then vet it, manipulate it, add to it, expand upon it, change it, and then commit it to the project itself. Let's take a look at our Abbott bar now. Go ahead and edit with our pencil button. And here, like I said, when we're using the product clipper, I can put as much information in from the product clipper or I can change it on the whiteboard as well. So I could commit this to our Lakewood project. We can go ahead, put this in family room, sales category, we'll select this furniture, et cetera. As much information as I want to use right here. If I click OK, all of that information is saved and our Abbott bar is still remaining on my whiteboard. Well, perhaps I want to send this over to the senior designer for this project just so they can review all of the information. We can do that from our whiteboard as well. So not only is the staging area for all of my concepts, I can now share these concepts with our other team members. So if I go back to our share and create options button, I can see the selection to transfer to another user. So if I want to go ahead and send my Abbott bar over for a further vetting with another team member, or, or in my case, the senior designer, I can just go ahead and select that option and send it right off to Lindsay Paoli. Click transfer. And just like that, design manager alerts me that the transfer was successful. And lo and behold, the Abbott bar is off of my whiteboard and is now over on Lindsay's waiting for her to review it herself. So not only is the whiteboard your personal area, it's an inner office collaboration tool as well. Okay, now let's finally take a tour of our much anticipated mobile app. Now, those of you who stopped by our cocktail hour at the designer's lounge at High Point got to experience the app firsthand. And you may notice a few changes since then. For everyone else, let's take a look. So I'm going to jump over to an application where I can share my iPhone screen. And I'm going ahead and bring up our brand new mobile app. And there it is. Now, since time is money, the very first feature that I want to show is our timer. I'm going to click on the record time and hit start timer. I can go ahead, put in a project if I want. Oops. Let's go right to our Lakewood home that we've been using. Activity, well, I'm doing a presentation. And there we go. And as we can see, obviously, Design Manager's already recording this time for me. This is extremely handy, as you want to accurately and effortlessly track all of your time for your clients. And whether it's billable or not, you should always know how much time you and your team are devoting to your projects. So while we go through the rest of our presentation, our time entry is going to be tracking how much time we spent. 
So we can go back to the main page. Now, let's look at all of our other options here. Let's go with our contacts. Since all of your important vendors, clients, employees, et cetera, are already stored in your Design Manager Pro Cloud, the mobile app gives you access to them with a quick click. So we can go right to our clients, see all of them, show all of our team members or employees, all of our vendors. And if we take a look here, so here's our Colonial Marble vendor. We can hit the phone, I can make a call right away, I can email, directions, no problem. I can get directions to the as well. So why have all these duplicate contacts in your phone? Just use the mobile app to sync right away with all of your previously stored ones in your Design Manager Pro Cloud. Okay, contacts. Now, let's move on to the gallery. The gallery allows you to review all of your existing Design Manager items for a particular project right on your phone. So if we go into the gallery, Let's go ahead and select our standard Lakewood project. There we go. And we can leave it set for all locations. I'm gonna go ahead and click the show items button. And now I can see all of my items in all of my various locations. And I could jump right down to let's say the kitchen perhaps. Oops. There we go. Now I'm looking at all of my kitchen items. Now notice, we're only showing the selling price, not the cost. So I can review this with the client. When we're out of the office, we're at the client's home or we're out at a business meeting or what have you, so we're only seeing information that the client is intended to see. So all of our items are already, all of our items that are in our Design Manager projects are easily accessible and conveniently accessible on our new mobile app. What if I want to capture some new items? Well, we can do that too. <clears throat> Let's move over to the capture feature. Now this allows us to create new items, either from just snapping a picture uh, when I'm out reviewing product or from a picture already uh, on our device. Go ahead and click capture. And we can see I can create a new or capture or create a new item just by clicking the add button or the plus sign in the top right corner. Let's go hit picture now. Uh, I'm sure no one really wants to see the furnishings in my humble office. So I'm going to go ahead and use a picture that I've already saved on my phone by using pick from library. And let's go ahead and grab this coffee table. And beneath we can see we can input project, location, item, name, all of our familiar fields already. So we could put this into our Lakewood project. Location, let's go to the family room here, sure. Item name, well, how about coffee table? Sales category, that's furniture. I can leave the description blank for now. Vendor, well, let's imagine that I'm at a showroom or a vendor from which I've never purchased before. The, the, the mobile app allows me to create a vendor right on the fly as well. So I can click the plus or the add button for vendor and input a vendor. I can select it from the phone or enter a new contact. How about uh, Martin's luxury furnishings? And I could put in as much information or as little as I'd like. Again, a recurring theme. I can always come back and add the information later. So I'll go ahead and click the checkbox in the top right corner and save our vendor. Oops. Now I'll go ahead. And again, I can leave as much of the information uh, blank as I'd like. And if I click the checkbox on the capture item, there we go. I've just created my brand new item through the mobile app. Now let's jump back to our timer. So as we've been presenting the mobile app, Design Manager's been tracking that for us the entire time. If I click the go to timer, I have some options here. I could pause the timer or I can create an entry. And when I do so, 
the time entry is now recorded and we can see it right listed for us beneath the total hours. And I could edit it if need be, change the start time, change the end time, put any additional description I would like as well. So now I've created and store a time entry also. Well, so where did everything go? That circles us right back to our whiteboard. So put our mobile app down, go back into our design manager. Now notice on our whiteboard, it says update available. It instantaneously knows that there's been new contacts, uh, items, some other entry has been received. So if we click the update available, what do we see? Everything that we've just entered. We've created a brand new vendor contact for Martin's Luxury Furnishing. Here's our coffee table that we just entered and my time entry that we created whilst we're giving the presentation on the mobile app itself. So let's edit our vendor for Martin's Luxury Furnishings by clicking pencil. And from the whiteboard vendor contact, I can now put the address in, city, state, zip, et cetera. And from here, I can use my create update option and I have share and create options just for the vendor. Create, duplicate, transfer, et cetera, or delete if I added it and don't want to have it input into design manager. If I select the create vendor, that brings us right to our standard and familiar vendor uh, window. So again, here I could put in my vendor address, email, as much information as I wanted. I could change the code. Design Manager crafted one for us, but I could uh, use MLF, Martin's Luxury Furniture. And if we click OK, all of our changes have been saved. Our vendor drops or is removed from our whiteboard. Why? Well, now it's in our vendor glossary under Martin's Luxury Furnishings. And once again, from here, I could put in as much information uh, that I need about the vendor address, et cetera, when I have time. Okay, so what else? We have our item, just like we use from the product clipper. I can review the item that I captured through the mobile app. We already have our project listed. We have our family room in there. I could expand upon the client description. All the exact same abilities are available. Doesn't matter if, if we came from the product clipper. It doesn't matter if it came from the mobile app. We can, in fact, even create items right from the whiteboard itself, all of which give us that ability to stage our items, review them, vet them, expand upon them, collaborate upon them, et cetera. And again, if I wanted to send this over for review, I could just hit my share and create options, transfer over, and allow the senior designer to take a look. And the transfer was successful. And now all of my concepts are being shared with my senior designer. And we have our time entry. From here, I can simply click our share and create, and I have options here. Review and create time entries. Again, I could transfer to another user. Perhaps one individual in our firm consolidates all of the time entries for us, reviews them, and then uh, imports them into Design Manager for Villain. If we click Review and Create, Design Manager is going to ask, hey, we're going to send these time entries to the review window. And we can do so from here. And there it is. Now I can review it, save it, get ready to record to my projects as well. So the whiteboard becomes this wonderful area to sort of consolidate all of our activities, all of our ideas, all of our concepts into one interrelated area for us. And with that, we've gone through some of the major new features. We have our unit of measure list. We have our item and purchase order component names. We have our brand new Chrome uh, plugin for our product clipper. We have our mobile app and we have the dynamic whiteboard, all of which is going to be coming towards us shortly. And with that, that gets us to the end of our tour of all of our ex exciting upcoming features. I sincerely hope you enjoy the enhancements. Uh, we take great pride here at Design Manager, continually and constantly upgrading our Design Manager Pro Cloud, which you have come to know and trust and love for all of these years. I thank you all 
for joining the discussion today, and I really hope you attend another of our free webinars in the near future. Take care and have a great day.